This is the Colorado River at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. We are uh, down here near Phantom Ranch, which is a uh, junction point between the North Rim and the South Rim. There's a footbridge here. It's the only way to get across the river. Um, and I've just hiked down about 14 miles with about 6,000 feet of elevation change down the North Kaibab Trail from the North Rim of the Canyon. And we're trying to get all the way up to the South Rim. We're doing a rim to rim hike. So I thought I'd um, share some of the cool geologic sites at the bottom of the canyon. Uh, we've had a couple of rainy days here in the western U.S. and so you can see just how chocolatey and, and uh, silt laden the Colorado River is right now. Um, this is actually kind of cool because this is a glimpse of what the Colorado River would normally look like. Um, before we had dams along the Colorado River system uh, there were big uh, flash flooding events and it carried a lot of silt and sediment on its way uh, down to the Gulf of California. So this is a nice view into kind of how that looks a little bit. Excuse me. Um, so we're gonna walk across this bridge. Down here at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, we're in an area called the Inner Gorge. And you can see the really steep cliffs, kind of the textured and um, multicolored rocks that make up the Inner Gorge. Up above, higher along the skyline, you can see some of the layered rocks, the Paleozoic sedimentary rocks that form the upper layers of the canyon. Uh, but because it's really hard to get down here at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, uh, and it's a place that most folks only get to when they either take a river trip or put in the effort to get down here on foot, I thought we'd take a minute and do a short video as we cross the bridge here and look at some of these rocks. These rocks that form the inner gorge are what we call basement rocks. These are some of the oldest rocks uh, on the continent. These specific rocks are about 1.8 billion years old. They're from the uh, Archean period of the Precambrian, um, and they represent a time when uh, plates were colliding along this part of North America. And these rocks are metamorphic and igneous in nature. So as we get across the bridge here, we'll scoot by these folks and kind of get a closer view of these things if we can. So, excuse me. <laughs> and so if we kind of look at these things up close, um, we can see a lot of them are kind of pinkish in color. This is the, uh, this is part of the granites that make up the uh, deep metamorphic or basement rocks here at the bottom of the canyon. Then we can see there's some layered rocks in here uh, that are very steeply oriented. These are high grade metamorphic rocks, schists and gneisses. And the story with all of these rocks collectively is these were the very deep roots of an ancient mountain belt that would have formed about, again, 1.8 billion years ago as continents were colliding, mountains were being pushed up, and in the deepest roots of these mountain belts, we had rocks undergoing intense temperatures and pressures uh, and turning into these metamorphic rocks. A little bit later after these metamorphic rocks were squished, and again, you can see the, the lines or the foliation here, magma injected into these rocks, into the cracks, and maybe melted them a little bit as well to form this pinkish rock here that's a granite. So if you kind of get up here close, whoops, sticky bush, we can see some of the quartz. A lot of the pink we see in here is a potassium feldspar. Uh, maybe we'll go across the way here where the outcrop is in the sunlight and we can hopefully see uh, some of the textural features here. This granite tends to be in places, um, this is pretty good, uh, very sparkly. So you can see some of these uh, cleavage planes of these crystals in here. There's uh, some black and brown uh, biotite mica. And this textural pattern we see in the granite is what's known as a pegmatite. Usually this is indicative of fluid water that's being that's incorporated with the magma and what that does is it allows the crystals to form much larger so we get bigger crystal sizes in the granitic rock than we might otherwise and you can kind of see it cutting across the rock here kind of splashing through the rock in all sorts of places um, maybe there's a big boulder up here we can look at too 
And so again, these high grade metamorphic rocks forming sort of in the, the bowels of an ancient mountain range, which is now, of course, eroded uh, and long gone. Yeah, so these boulders here coming off this face all show this really great uh, pegmatitic texture with these big, again, microcrystals, quartz, and then the feldspar making up the, the pinkish material there. So just fantastic geology. The Grand Canyon is sometimes considered a, you know, like a Mecca, a holy pilgrimage site, if you will, uh, for geology because it teaches us so much. There's all this rock on display and that rock represents such a vast amount of geologic time that we can glean a lot of information from it. So we're looking up here at these <clears throat> kind of messy, uh, jumbled, metamorphic rocks then there's a nice pronounced layer uh, just above them that's the tapete sandstone it's a cambrian layer uh, and then we can see other layers forming above that uh, like the, the red wall limestone up there way off in the distance uh, that's the coconino sandstone that kind of that whitish layer on that pinnacle there and that's not even the rim of the canyon down here we actually can't see uh, all the way to the rim of the canyon so i'm going to start my hike out it's going to be a long slog nine or 10 miles, 5,000 feet. So we'll get it done. But again, just great geology, uh, scenery, and all sorts of things to enjoy here in the inner gorge of the Grand Canyon.